the woman of the hour. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just having shot. Ask her how many puppies she just gave injections to. Yeah, that's a good and one. And did she get it in her finger? I didn't stab myself. Huh? They're down there still around there. There's a girl that's going to shut up like she's going to I can't remember any of their names. Mackenzie, I think. I'm so terrible. What happened? When, whenever I was here last, they asked me about Walter's tail. Oh. And I said it's fine. It's not fine. I went home that night and looked at it. It's like there's this one spot where it kinks, where it was all it was all one spot in solid color last couple last week or whatever. Now there's like a, a red spot on it, and I looked and it's right where the bone. Like I'm worried now that the bone's gonna like pop through or something. <laughs> well, hang in there and see. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Tina. The, the thing that's going to complicate matters is he can lick it. Yeah, he can definitely lick it. trying to write a thank, a thank you to a bunch What's of people. What's the most important behavior you can teach? I know this one. I know this one. I'll wait till Carlene's off the phone. <laughs>
all loose in the San Marino parking lot. And you heard this scream, and Carlene looked at me and said, that's when you run. We threw them off down, we ran out to the parking lot, and Fido was on the ground, and all the other dogs were circling him. Um, and he was screaming and screaming and screaming. So she, she yelled for me to go get Fido and pull him into the barn alleyway and, and tell him he's a good boy, he's a good boy, and just keep telling him he's a good boy. That's all she kept saying. And she went and disciplined all the dogs. And then after that, Bumper wanted to continue to fight Fido. Um, could never leave him alone together in the house. They always wanted to finish the fight, you could say. So Carlene was worried. She, she couldn't sleep. She was afraid that they were going to have this huge dog fight in the middle of the night. So she kind of turned to me. Or I kind of turned to her and I said, I'll take them home for an overnight. So I took them to my house for an overnight. I brought him in. My mom said no. And then I said, he's only here for a few days until he recovers from his dog fight. Two weeks later, my mom looked at me and said, he's never leaving, is he? And I said, no, well, he's going to stay forever. So that's how I got fight out. Get them to jump on me. Um, 
We're giving them, we're giving people back their independence, so that's the bonus of it. And I have three personal dogs to help me get over that sadness, I guess. Um, is, our, is our camera in the right position? Yeah, somebody moved it up for oh. me. Okay. Oh, Devin, the boy. Okay. It was Haley or Olivia. There's a video. I'll find it and post it. Okay, yeah, please post it. If it's Devin, I'll talk to him because I'll see him. I'll see him soon. I asked who Ava and Gronk were jumping on. Somebody said that. Turn your, you're going you're gonna to backfire on that. Right? So he was jumping on Devin? That's that's what they said. They said possibly they think it was Devin. I've seen Devin. Devin, Devin girl? Devin boy. Devin boy. I've seen Devin boy run around and pump up the dog. So it's very well a possibility that. Pumping up dogs is a very bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, we don't like that. I explained to them that we don't, we always teach four on the floor. That's yep. the most important thing. Um, uh, by the clock. Let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. Are the dogs attached to me? Is it hard for them to transfer to their new humans? Sometimes, yes, it's hard. Um, it can take a while. That's why we like to have people stay in the guest house for a while. Um, we want the dog to look to them instead of the trainers. My moment when I know that it's going to be okay is I, after a few, all the recipients will tell you this, that after like three or four days of going out, um, I'll pull in in the car. I do it with everybody. I park near the ramp or the stairs, whatever they're more comfortable with. And I say, okay, I want you to get out of the car, harness your dog, and I want you to walk yourself into the guest house. Because normally we'd be right there with them, like tell the dog, whoa, give him a step, whoa, like that whole nine yards. Um, so I'm like, get out and do it yourself. And if you need me, just w flag me down. So I sit there and I park the car. And when the dog gets out and walks away and doesn't look back at me, then I know we're, we're good. <laughs> yeah, it's time for them to leave. Like there's, because at the beginning, they're with these people, and if I'm just down the hall, they're like, but Meg's over there, and I don't understand. So once they get that, oh, no, I'm with, I'm with them, then we know. See, I'm, I'm with that person that lets me sleep in their bed. Yeah. Then so they decide Megan is second. Yeah. <laughs> what input do trainers have in matching the dogs? I think we have a lot of input. I mean, sometimes we'll sit here and argue for a oh, while yeah. about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So... We'll go back and forth when somebody thinks a certain dog will be good with a kid and somebody thinks it'd be better with a veteran and somebody thinks it'd be better with a taller person. So there, we, we have all different angles. It's never just, uh, oh, this and this. Yeah, go for it. it. There's always a lot of questions. It's not, it. it's not a one-to-one -one situation. No, no, never is. People say, how long does it take to place a person with a dog? I don't know because somebody could come down the driveway tomorrow who's absolutely perfect person for a perfect dog and yeah. we probably would send them off with a dog. Yeah. Yep. And other people have been around for a year and yep. it's 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 the person and the dog that you gotta match and it's tough. So the pokies, you wanna know which one is a thinker and which which one is mischief. Um, the thinker in that group mm, that's a tough one. <laughs> mischief i I'll go with that one. That's an easy one. That's spinner. <laughs> Always Always looking for some sort of trouble. Um, thinker, I, I say it's tied between washer and uh, tumbler. They're both really good dogs. They always you always find them sitting back and just observing and watching everybody else. Isn't Neko? Neko is a calorie. Oh, well, that's fine. But I mean, is Neko a thinker? Yeah, you could. Yeah. yeah. I just recently moved her up here, so I don't spend as much time with her. But um, she's quiet. She's a she's, she's a good one. Yeah. That's why we thought she's she was actually dead. latched on to Steve, which is funny. I always mm -hmm. call it his puppy because when we're down there, when he like at feeding, I don't know if anyone's ever noticed when it's Steve and I, and I'm at the feeder and he's putting them away, and he goes to get the other bulls. She always goes right behind him, and no matter how fast he tries to shut that gate, she's right behind him, and she's looking up at him like, "Look, I look, I'm right here." <laughs> and when we walk back and forth. She always finds Steve and walks right next to him and looks at him like he's the best thing in the whole world. I'm always like, your puppy found you, and like, there she is. So, um, do I see any of the young assistants becoming trainers? That's tough. Um, there's a lot of good volunteers, a lot of great people that come here and work with the dogs, whether it's spoon feeding, um, off-leash recall, 
I mean, like Carleen says, anytime you're handling a dog, even walking into the kennel, patting it, you're training it. So that's there's a few of them that I think have some potential, um, for sure. There's definitely a few. You try to expose the dogs to cats or other animals. I have two cats, so I take dogs home a lot. Um, Katie had had cats, so she takes dogs home to her house. So they, they see them, but sometimes they're interested in them. I have a cat that thinks she's a dog, so she's very forward, I guess. Every time I bring in a, a puppy or a big dog, she walks right up and dances in between their legs, and they're just, sometimes we just <laughs> freeze, like, what's this thing gonna do to me? Um, as, as for other animals, we got the, the guinea hens. Guinea hens and the chickens. And the yep. chickens and the, there's donkeys and horses yep. here. They certainly see other animals. my dog training skills in other situations? If so, I'm sure it was successful. Yes, I have. Um, I was at a party. With, it was like a family party, and there was a kid running around with a giant super soaker gun, and he was spraying everyone, okay? Like, I'm talking like drenching people, and people were, stop, stop, and he was just this little three-year-old boy and just soaking everyone. He turned that gun to me, and I, <laughs> I put on my game face, and I said, don't you even think about it, and he was like, Okay, and turned and just started spraying him. Everyone was like, that was so mean. Like, you're so mean. I was like, I just put on my dog face. Like, so <laughs> he responded really well to it. So I do have an angry side. I'm not all smiling all the time. Uh, we're, we're 505. I'm pushing into your time right here. Um, let's see you can quit whatever you'd like. Can there be some kind of training for volunteers? I put me to people teasing dogs, <sighs> dogs jumping up on them. That's interesting. This woman says that, um, can there be some sort of training for the volunteers? Personally, she's seen people teasing the dogs and the dogs jumping up on them and picking up puppies incorrectly. I think if anybody sees that, it's me. they should definitely shoot an email. Um, <coughs> if you, I don't know how you guys get clips or videos or I don't know how that works, but a lot of you know how to do it and they send you. Yeah. Little I know. I almost know who they're, who they're talking about. Okay. I think we've straightened it out. Okay. Yeah. As long as we have any type of behavior like that, if you see teasing or dogs jumping up on anyone, that's that's a red flag. We can't. Um, people. A lot of people think, oh, they jump on me because they love me and it's, they're hugging me. And it's no. These dogs. They're not. <laughs> we're not just. They're not just pet dogs. These dogs are trained. Um, they live here for a purpose. Um, they're not just. Gonna, we're not going to allow them to jump all over everybody all the time. It's, that's a big no-no. So. No, because I'm getting fragile. Yeah, you're I'm not an old lady. We're, we're all fragile. The puppies that will go on overnights first is going to be probably in another three weeks. It will be the pokey puppies. They'll be the first ones to be able to go on overnights because they'll be completely covered with all their shots. starting to rotate puppies again now that they're becoming healthy. Yep, um, we're rotating dogs around quite a bit just because the dogs down there get different exposure than the ones up here. There's a lot, sometimes there's a lot more going on down in the barn. Um, I call it downtown than there is uptown. So <laughs> other than that, everyone's healthy. Um, can't complain on that front. All done? All done. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Yay. <laughs> Bye, go home. Yeah, I'll see you till Monday. <laughs>